Hello and greetings from Iceland, but today I will be focusing on the large earthquake that occurs near Reykjavik every 50 years or so. And the reason for this video now is simple, we've been asked to make sure that things don't move around and overall be ready for a large one. But uh, I have actually been mentioning this uh, on my channel from time to time, even though it's a scenario that has been rarely mentioned around here or until now. After this rather large earthquake last weekend that I covered uh, in a recent video I'm linking to. But today I will be showing you around from maps, browsing through history, old and new science information and of course uh, using my own uh, footage to show you around and bring you closer. But uh, let's start with a map view. It's common science knowledge here in Iceland that we are entering this very active period that might go on for the next 200 years. And the volcanic systems on the peninsula are just a part of that uh, unfolding story. Along the seismic zone that follows the tectonic plate boundary is this very young land, so earthquakes don't get that big. But earthquakes are frequent though along the complete uh, peninsula or until we are here on the so-called uh, sulfur mountains. There we have the thickest landmass on the peninsula with a higher breaking point than elsewhere. So when I use this earthquake layer on top of my map, we see clearly where the sulfur mountain obstacle is. So this is quite simple. When this part of the land snaps, it snaps bad. And we get an earthquake up to magnitude 6.3, perhaps 6.5. And the last one occurred in 1968 and before that in 1929. And according to old newspapers, the 1929 earthquake shook almost uh, all of the country. But back then there were only two seismometers in Reykjavik that uh, fell to the floor and didn't provide any good readings. But uh, the earthquake could be seen in seismometers in England, but it went on for like 30-40 seconds. And this is how the earthquake map uh, looked back then. There were some property damages in Reykjavik. Cracked walls, chimneys, uh, fell from houses, people on bicycles lost control and uh, fell on the streets, and of course damages in retail stores and homes, but uh, luckily no fatal accidents. And after the big one, a few more earthquakes made it to the news back then or on the peninsula in Grindavík and also on the westernmost part of the peninsula. And around here by Lake uh, Kleivarvatn, where there used to be a tiny little hot spring, an uh, explosion occurred and created what uh, still today remains as uh, one of our most powerful hot springs. But at first this was just a mud pool where pockets of uh, air made uh, huge bubbles that uh, blew up many times a minute. So the local farmers had a good show for a while. But uh, by time it turned into what it is today. So the earthquake led to some major changes in geothermal activity around there. But in 1968 we got the next one. And it's believed to be slightly smaller. Only minor damages were reported in the city as houses were getting way better back then. And at first it was believed that the epicenter was uh, by Lake Clevervat that we have still in the background here. And the road beside the lake was hit by rock slides. And even though we might have learned something from the 1929 earthquake and uh, bolted down the seismometers, the exact location was rather unclear back then. But now our experts believe that both those earthquakes occurred on a fault around here and the landscape up there is really something. The thickest uh, lava layer cake on the peninsula. But uh, let's take a look at the surfer mountains uh, from this angle next from the map or from over Lake Clevervat where it's very easy to see the proximity to the capital region to the left from the mountains. And the easternmost crater provided us with uh, this building land here as we look back straight up to the sulfur mountains. The good news is that uh, our houses are well built for uh, the most part, mostly from concrete with uh, double iron grids in all walls and floors and uh, designed to withstand uh, large uh, earthquakes. But the bad news is that we've been building closer and closer by the plate boundary, but even so I would not expect uh, huge damage. But uh, things indoors will of course uh, move around and such, so that might just be the biggest risk. And uh, as for infrastructure, most of our cold water comes uh, from under those uh, lava fields up there, so natural pipelines might uh, be at even greater risk than our own pipelines. And the same goes for hot water since there are 
2 og geothermal power plants up there by the plate boundary. Boreholes could collapse or lose power, but other boreholes might benefit though. And overall, the capital region might get lucky and it would just be an earthquake bit bigger than we usually have. But uh, as the situation is now, however, we might get some side effects since uh, so many volcanic systems are showing signs of unrest these days. So let's take a look at the lake Klevervatn again, but the water level there dropped by 4 meters after a large earthquake in South Iceland in the year 2000. And uh, that had to do with a fissure at the bottom of the lake that opened up. But uh, by time, it most likely was filled up with uh, sediment and clay. But I don't think it takes so much to see that lake drain again. But there is, however, something more going on around there. A few years back, some divers reported a kind of a black hole at the bottom of the lake and the dead fish around. But they didn't take the risk to go down there. And I don't blame them. And uh, a little over a week ago, we got this unusual earthquake swarm under the lake, but it is located just by the sulfur mountains on the plate boundary and there are many hot springs under the lake. And uh, it's also one of our most uh, undervalued tourist destinations. It's uh, simply a place that has uh, something to it that's hard to describe. But I have a feeling that in future this will become a tourist hotspot, but it's only 50 minutes away from the city. And I'm actually glad that those warnings have been issued now about this earthquake that uh, awaits us. It's always a shock to experience a large earthquake close by the epicenter. But it's even a greater shock if you don't know what hit us, especially for the young ones. And uh, we have had plenty of earthquakes in Reykjavik for last year. And I know of people who packed down lots of stuff as they were going on before the eruption started. And uh, those people are not unpacking them. But it's not all bad since a friend of mine is uh, still celebrating the fact that uh, his wife packed down many of the ugliest wedding presents they got from uh, kind-hearted relatives with uh, awful taste when it comes to interior decorations. So this situation, as we wait for the big one, has its own benefits. But we must at all times look at the bright sides. And uh, an earthquake is indeed not the worst situation we might face in the future. But constant air pollution can be way more dangerous. And it can go on for days and weeks like this mist from the eruption last year. But uh, after an earthquake, it's uh, over, back to work, fix what has to be fixed. And the box with the ugly wedding presents will just disappear with a great excuse. So this is more or less the status today, as presented by our experts. And even though I tend to complain from time to time due to lack of information and such, they have before been spot on when it comes to long-term events especially, like they've been telling us for 20-30 years now that the Reykjanes Peninsula was getting ready, and we were well informed about the South Iceland earthquakes before they occurred in 2000 and 2008. And I see no reason to doubt that they are very serious now as they inform us that uh, we should get ready for a big one this time. And uh, with that, I'm sending you best regards from the earthquake and volcano island, Iceland.